what's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this quick one, I'll be showing you how to optimize Modern Warfare 3 for the best performance while playing the brand new Zombies mode. It's similar to DMZ, played on a huge open world map, so you'll definitely need some optimization to keep the game running in tip top shape, especially because it's a super competitive game. Most of these steps will obviously carry across to single player, multiplayer, and Warzone, but this guide will mainly be focused on zombies. All right, so on the main menu, all you need to do is head up to settings in the top right, followed by graphics, and we'll start here. Well, actually, we'll go to the interfaces section, which is this button down here, scroll all the way to the bottom, and turn on skipping the introduction movie. This will save you a lot of headache if you need to restart the game a few times. Anyways, heading back to the graphics tab, starting at the very top, display mode. This should definitely be set to full screen exclusive for the best input latency and performance. Display adapter should be the most powerful graphics card in your system, especially if you're on a laptop or device with multiple GPUs. Then, screen refresh rate should match your monitor, and so should the display resolution over here. If not, you'll either be rendering pixels you don't see, or the game will be needlessly blurry. Aspect ratio is your preference, shaders preloading, you should absolutely return to this option when we're done optimizing, and click it to restart shader compilation just to make sure everything's optimized for your new settings. Display gamma should be 2.2 if you're on a PC, otherwise 2.4 if you're using a television. Brightness is your preference, just make sure it's not pushed too high, otherwise things will be needlessly washed out. As we are doing this specifically for the zombies optimization, you may find that the mode is a lot darker compared to other game modes, so this is something you may want to raise, but if you don't like how the game gets washed out very quickly, you can instead change your brightness and contrast settings in something like the NVIDIA control panel. Such as, pulling it up over here, on the video color settings at the very bottom, we'll be able to choose NVIDIA settings and adjust our brightness, contrast, saturation, as well as gamma over here to get us much better visibility while a game. You'll need to play around with this to find settings that you like, however. Also, keep in mind, if you're recording or streaming, these options won't affect your stream at all unless you're using something like an Elgato to capture your video stream rather than your display in something like OBS. Scrolling further down, NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency should be on if you're using an NVIDIA graphics card, and it should be on plus boost if you have an NVIDIA GPU with a much lower-powered CPU. Constraining mouse to game window is optional, but I'd recommend it if you're playing in windowed mode. Scrolling down, sustainability, vSync should be turned off as well as menus off unless you're getting a screen tearing where something like this effect happens. Frame rate limit, I usually set to custom, pretty much uncap my in-game frame rate, then cap my menu frame rate to give my PC a little bit of a break while it's not playing the game, the GPU can cool down, uses less power, etc. Out of focus is also something I'd lower, but if you push this too low and you play in windowed mode, it may look a bit weird when you're tabbed out, it'll become super stuttery. If you're someone who records or streams and you find that other programs are lagging, such as videos on YouTube or OBS and things like that, you can cap your frame rate to slightly lower than the frame rate you're getting in game to save a little bit of GPU power for your streams, recordings, etc. High dynamic range is your preference as long as you have an HDR display, you can enable it to see a lot more color and the difference between light and dark objects should be much bigger, allowing you to see better in dark areas. Focused mode has to do with your other monitors, so I'd absolutely recommend changing this all the way down to zero, as it can be super annoying making everything else darker. It was called something differently previously, but now it's just focus mode with a slider. So, 0% for me. On the quality tab, we'll be asked to apply our settings, so I'll do that. We'll start at the very top. Graphics preset should be set based on whatever you think your PC's ability is. If it's a powerful PC, set it to balanced. Otherwise, set it to minimum and work your way up. i will start at balanced. Render resolution should match your display if you're not going to be using any kind of upscaling, so it should be 100%. Anything higher, you'll be wasting extra power for not much really. Anything lower, it'll look needlessly pixely. What I would recommend is using an upscaler such as DLSS, XESS, or AMD FSR. There's tons of options here, and most of them improve how the game looks while improving your performance, except for DLAA and Fidelity FX CAS, as these only do extra work on top of your native resolution, making it look better, rather than using AI magic to upscale. So, XESS, DLSS, and FSR 2.1 are great options here. If you expand this, you'll have a quality preset. Simply push this more to the quality side to start with, and work your way down to maybe quality or possibly balanced. If you really need extra performance, you will need the better visual fidelity of the higher quality options, especially for a large open map, where distant objects will start 
to blow if AI is working a little bit too hard. VRAM target scale should be set to around 80-ish percent usually, and if you have an upscaler that supports variable rate shading, it should absolutely be turned on. FSR 2 doesn't, FSR 1 does, as well as I think one of the options here, NVIDIA image scaling. Yeah, what you choose, however, is pretty much your preference. Scrolling all the way down, details and textures. Texture resolution should match your graphics card's VRAM, and you'll find estimations in the bottom right. Usually, if you have 6 gigs or above in VRAM, choose high. 4 gigs and above, choose normal. Anything below that, low, and possibly very low if you have a really low-powered GPU. Choosing an option that's too high will cause you some frame drops, but choosing something too low, expecting more frames, will be a bit disappointing. You won't gain much by lowering it too far. Anisotropic filtering, leave this on high if you prefer better quality. Depth of field off for better vision. Detail quality level, as we're playing multiplayer, should be low here for better visibility, especially in high foliage areas. Particle resolution should be set to low. Raising this can result in frame stutters and frame drops usually. Bullet impacts may be considered a tactical advantage, so you'll probably want to leave these on, and persistent effects I'd usually leave off. While you can see explosions and scars in surfaces, I'd recommend keeping this off for better, more consistent performance while you're playing the game, especially considering the map is so large. Shader quality you'll usually want to leave all the way down on low, but it does get rid of screen space reflections and things like that. If you push it to medium, however, you'll notice around a 10 to 12% FPS decrease, but the game does look a lot prettier with these reflections and details coming back. On-demand texture streaming should be off, and local texture streaming quality should be set to low. Then, shadow and lighting, shadow quality should be set to ultra, if possible, as it could also be considered a tactical advantage. Screen space shadows, you can either leave on high for good quality or off if you don't want them at all for more performance. Usually, high is best here. It's a relatively cheap effect. Ambient occlusion should be set to static objects only, and if you need more performance, you can drop this to off. Screen space reflections are similar to screen space shadows. They are also a relatively cheap effect, but they do add quite a bit of depth to the game. I'd recommend leaving this on high, otherwise set it to off for more performance, but the game will look a lot more flat and dull. Static reflection quality you can leave on high, otherwise once again things look a bit dull and it's not that expensive as an effect. All the way down, environment. Tessellation should be set to all for the best looking gameplay. Terrain memory max, volumetric quality medium, deferred physics quality off, weather grid volumes normal, and water quality off as well. But you can enable one of these options if you'd like light to look a lot better when you're underwater, see the right image here, and wetness if you'd like how surfaces look wet, etc. when they come out of the water. You can choose all here if you want really pretty looking underwater areas, but it doesn't really matter to be honest. Off is usually good enough and should give you a good performance increase if you're in the water. That's pretty much it for keeping the game looking as good as possible while increasing our frame rate. If you'd want extra frames, things we can lower would be texture resolution if you're pushing your VRAM way too hard, particle resolution down to low if it's not already, shader quality low as well if you can handle the quality drop, but I'd usually leave this one on as long as possible, shadow quality to high instead of ultra, once again tactical advantage, leave this a bit higher than lower where possible, tessellation you can set from all to off instead, volumetric quality from medium down to low, and finally weather grid volumes normal to off. That's pretty much it. If you really need further performance, you can try screen space reflections, screen space shadows, as well as ambient occlusion all to off as well, though those are really grasping at straws. Finally, on the view tab, we'll apply and start with field of view. This is entirely your preference. Set this to what you like and leave it. Even though it may cost you more performance, you should rather have a better playing and feeling game than chasing higher FPS numbers. The same goes for field of view, ADS, weapon, third person, and vehicle. All your preference. As for camera, world motion blur, I'd absolutely recommend turning off as it gives you much better visibility, especially in a large open world when you're looking at things in the distance that may otherwise be blurry and not seen at all. Weapon motion blur is your preference. However, this doesn't really have too much of a performance impact and really just relies on being your preference. Film grain, I'd usually recommend having lower rather than higher. Either disable this completely or leave it very low at something like 0.10. First person camera movement, I'd recommend dropping to less or at least 
especially if you suffer from motion sickness for both third person and first person. If you do suffer from motion sickness, disabling motion blur as well, as well as depth of field on the previous quality tab can all possibly improve how you feel. And that's really it, besides inverted flashbang, which is your preference if you like it going dark instead of bright as well. On the audio tab, I'd recommend changing your audio mix from whatever it is to PC speaker for the tightest dynamic range, meaning that footsteps will be a lot louder and explosions a lot quieter, making you have a large tactical advantage versus having it at a more cinematic option for campaign. Besides that, microphones should be push to talk rather than open, especially if you don't know your microphone is currently enabled or even on. And that's pretty much it. You now know how to optimize your game for the best performance in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. Most of these settings will carry across to multiplayer and Warzone as well. But if you'd like more detailed guides, do let me know. Anyways, thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.